we doing? What are we doing? Why? Oh my God. It gets worse and worse as this continues. See, now I've done screwed up my, my, my camera and all. Okay. <laughs> why, 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 why do we think that the smart decision to, to make when making a Star Wars show that we already know is highly controversial, many people, most of the fandom thinks absolutely sucks, the viewership has been barely anything whatsoever, and it has had one of the worst amount of ratings from the audience of anything Star Wars, at least in a good while, from my knowledge, if not probably the worst ratings I've seen at least. And so we're going to stick the first live action appearance of Darth Plagueis into it. You guys obviously don't know this because I haven't talked about this before because I didn't think I'd have to. I didn't think that Darth Plagueis would ever show up in live action or in anything, to be honest, ever. Because this was far before the uh, Phantom Menace. Actually, not far before. He was still alive up to a certain point. But he was, he was before that. He wasn't in any of the scenes. This was a character that was only found in... Legends and was found in the book of Palpatine and basically his which is canon still I believe and it is basically how Palpatine went from being a younger man to or a younger kid all the way up to a younger man and being with Darth Plagueis learning the different things and becoming um you know the Chancellor Palpatine Emperor Palpatine his his way up the ladder and he had to kill his master to do it. His master being Darth Plagueis the Wise. And his master being, um, it was like Darth, I want to say it was like Darth, oh, Jesus. What was it? Darth, I keep on wanting to say Tyrannus, but that's Dooku. That's not even, it's not even right. Darth, Tin, Tin Callus, Tin, Tin Tuck. And ticklous? It was, dude, it was it's it's a weird name. But besides the point, these are like ancient Sith. And the Acolyte is supposed to be a good time before all of this. Um so let me see this. I, I have to look up this name. Darth. If I can get this correct without screwing this up. Plagueis. Uh, every time I press it, I see that stupid picture. Darth Plagueis Master. Darth Tenebrous. See, I knew it was something close. Darth Tenebrous was the Sith Master of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Um, Tenebrous was suspected to have designed Scimitar, the personal starship of the Sith Lord Darth Maul that was originally designed by engineer and starship designer Wraith Senior. Okay, so obviously this guy had a little bit of, uh, what do you want to call it, design into certain things that was into Star Wars later on. Uh, like it just said, Darth Maul's ship. Um, which I guess was originally his personal starship. I did not know that. You learn something new every day. Pretty cool info that I just learned about Darth Tenebrous. I haven't looked too much into the more ancient Sith during the time of like the golden age of like the Jedi. It's not really the, it's the High Republic, but it not really. It's like right after it or kind of near the end. But anyways, what I'm basically trying to get out of here is that all of this stuff, just as I, I'm, I'm showing you now and talking about, this stuff was in here beforehand. This stuff was already made beforehand, pre-made, pre-done, pre-explained. There's already lore. What are we doing? Now we're sh we've already switched up and changed so much of the fucking canon. First and foremost... Now Anakin being the chosen one means absolutely diddly fucking squat 
means dog shit. Means absolute dog shit now. Means nothing. Means nothing. Because now we've got, I was going to say one, but they split it into two. And I know I said that I was done dealing with anything on the Acolyte. And I was right. And that I was done watching the show. I was waiting till it ended to check out um, anything from, and my source mainly is Star Wars Theory. He is an amazing YouTuber, one of the biggest Star Wars YouTube channels that there is on YouTube or in any type of media at all. I went ahead and checked his, his video out and I happened to listen to what he had to say. And like I've told you all before in videos before, this man is usually on the fucking dot for um, shit being correct. Nine times out of ten. Now, he does have his his, his personal beliefs in, in some of the stuff, and I don't always agree with all of it. Um, you can never fully 100% agree with everything everyone has to say. That's just not going to happen. That's, that's reality. Um, but at the end of the day... He, this is something that I fully agree with him on. We completely have taken away the the whole purpose of Anakin being the chosen one now because now there seems to have been people beforehand that have been created f from the force with no no parents or or no father or anything. Just just out of the fucking blue. There's a boom. Here you are. Here's some dark cloudy mist people. Woo! And it makes it even worse because now we went from Darth Plagueis the Wise, literally in his name, the Wise, being a super highly intelligent, wisdom-filled Sith Lord that took a different route from the route of many of the Sith beforehand and got more into the scientific side and the magic, dark, dark force side, like of the force, basically. He got into like the dark magic side. And started learning how to create life, uh, keep himself from dying, things of that nature. That's what made him so cool. And it was even better because we'd never seen Darth Plagueis before. And it kind of added more mystery to him. We know very little about anything, even now after the Acolyte, about Darth Plagueis. And the problem is, now the Acolyte, due to it having to be canon, according to Disney, Disney canon. Now this is how it happened. Darth Plagueis learned from a bunch of witches. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. He is a Sith Lord. Why would he learn from a bunch of witches when he quite literally is delved into the dark side of the Force himself? He is highly trained, highly taught by Darth Tenebris... And all of the other Sith before him. He had multitudes of Sith history artifacts. Artifacts that Darth Sidious took after he killed Darth Plagueis. You can see it sitting in the in Palpatine's office. You can see it in Revenge of the Sith. You can see it in... Um, you can see them even in uh, the, the Phantom Menace, I believe... I believe there's a scene with him being, or no, 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 I'm sorry, it, uh, uh, Attack of the Clones, because at that time he had not yet become um, the, the, the Chancellor slash, like, he hadn't fully become the Chancellor yet, uh, which he doesn't become the Chancellor late, until later on anyways, but he's a Senator. Whole, whole, whole point, regardless of any of that, confusion being added. Um, and, and knowing specifically when and where Palpatine was what. He had it in his office at one point, and you actually get to see that, which I've always said, I don't know how the Jedi didn't know that those were Sith artifacts, probably due to lack of education in the Sith, because that's what the Jedi believed in. They believed in completely annexing themselves and completely leaving themselves out and disconnected from the Sith and the dark side of the Force, Believing that having it in at all or any knowledge in it would cause problems. Which ended up being false because had they known more about the Sith, they would know more about their rules, what they do. And they would have learned uh, maybe how to stop the Sith and stop the rise of the Sith and figure out who Palpatine was. And plus Palpatine was so powerful in the Force, he was using it to cloud the, the, the Jedi's 
judgment. Even so powerful, he did it to Yoda himself, clouding his judgment, clouding what he could sense in the Force. Um, but having Darth Plagueis in the Acolyte, learning from these witches is just so stupid. It it ruins the the whole it literally ruins his name in general, Darth Plagueis the Wise. He was supposed to have researched all of this stuff, done the experiments. He was an experimenter. Darth Plagueis was known to be a very cruel Sith Lord that was an experimenter. He experimented on people. And he was very open to experimenting with many things. So much so that even though he did not quite agree with Darth Sidious, who was his apprentice at the time, having his own apprentice, he still allowed him to have Darth Maul, um, allowing him to have Darth Maul basically as a Sith assassin that he can quite literally train. He still allowed it because he was so open-minded with being um, scientifically inclusive to anything and everything of the dark side, allowing anything to happen. He was very open about allowing anything that he could possibly see because he was a scientist. Scientists are very open to anything. They'll try out anything to see if, if something comes out of it. And at the end of the day, it, it would not surprise me if Darth Plagueis at some point in time, and this isn't canon, would have done no different than Darth Sidious did, which was basically seeing if this Sith assassin could become more powerful than his apprentice and maybe he could replace him. And, and it makes sense because where would, where would Palpatine get that idea from? Because he got it from all the Sith from before. The rule of two and the idea that the apprentice one day will become strong enough to kill his master and become a better, which would inevitably cause every Sith after the next Sith to be stronger, wiser, and better. It was literally a system meant to build up the Sith. Having him learn this from witches completely ruins him being Darth Plagueis the Wise, completely ruins the possibilities of of how intelligent and how absolutely just cool, just cool in general. I mean, they made him some creepy little monster going around the corner, creeping on kids and creeping on these witches and, and watching from a distance. It's, it's just stupid. It's, it's stupid. And I just, it's just dumb. I don't understand it. I don't understand why they would do this. Maybe just to have, and like like Star Wars Theory even said, you can go check out his video about this, his his final reaction to the acolyte. And trust me, he's very happy that this is that this is over, and I am as well. Um, they better not make a second season. This was terrible. Perhaps the actual writers or whatever wanted their little stamp of approval upon Disney and say that I did this. I put Darth. Darth Plagueis into live action, which good for you, good for you, but you put it into something that absolutely sucked. And now it ruins Darth Plagueis for me. He had so much potential as a Sith. I was so excited to see what, what, what Star Wars could possibly bring out of him. And I'm surprised it took this long to even get anything about Darth Plagueis. But also I like that there was a mystery like he, it was just vague. I like that Darth Plagueis was a very vague, unknown, a whole lot about character. Because it just makes the Sith seem so much more powerful and mysterious and dark. And having us not know a whole lot about the more ancient Sith is better because we're not technically supposed to. The Jedi didn't know. It was not taught. It was not something that was supposed to be brought up. The only time we're supposed to learn anything about Darth Plagueis the Wise is from the people that were actually around him and knew him. Hearing it from Qui-Gon would have been one thing because maybe Qui-Gon had, had fought him before because Qui-Gon had had something in the past where he, is, he had dealt with the Sith. But then again, it wouldn't make sense because it wouldn't follow the lore. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, there, there's cool ideas, like the one I just had. Ooh, Qui-Gon fighting him. 
but it does not follow with the lore because Qui-Gon brought up the whole thing that the Sith have returned. How would he just bring that up if he had fought them before? You see what I'm saying? If you know the lore and you know Star Wars, there's a thought process behind it. You have to say, here's some cool ideas. Let's throw them out onto the, onto the board here, out on the table. Oh, wait, this wouldn't make sense to the lore or the canon because this hadn't happened yet. Boom, take that out. Cool ideas scrapped with. You could always make an Elseworld different like Star Wars what if story. But at the end of the day, it shouldn't go into the main canon because you completely ruined it. See how quick that was? See how quick it was to take a cool idea and just go, you know what? It wouldn't make sense to the lore. It just doesn't make sense. Let's throw it out. As cool as it is, no. And I love Qui-Gon. And I love the idea of Darth Plagueis. And having them fight would be the coolest thing ever. But it's just not canon. It's that simple. And I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I don't know everything that there is to know about Star Wars. But I know way more than the people in the Acolyte obviously do because after hearing what comes out of the show after what I hadn't watched and what I had watched beforehand, it's shit. It's dog shit. It's dog shit that me as a fan, I happen to know more than the people that are writing something involving Star Wars. And the fact that the actors don't know a whole lot about Star Wars does not help your case. I believe any actor in anything should also know things about what they're acting into I, I truly do do i think they're going to know absolutely everything no because not even the fans know absolutely everything it is humanly impossible to be able to recite every single part of every single thing whether it be star wars lord of the rings marvel dc mortal Kombat, anything you can think of harry potter any of it but you should know the basics for example Anakin not blowing up the Death Star. That should be known. Luke blew up the Death Star. Having one of the actors say that, not once. I don't even think it was twice. I'm pretty sure it was like three times or more. I had only seen the two times, but I had heard from others, other people um, that it had been more times in other interviews. I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, they didn't even know who actually blew up the Death Star. That is that should just be common knowledge. That's just watching the movie. Literally, it does not take a whole lot of time to watch the movies and just just that's it. You only need to watch them once to get the main stories down and the main things. Who fell into the Starlight pit? Boba Fett. I saw it happen in the movie. Boom, like that. That's all it took. You don't need to watch something multiple times or be so invested into it that you know everything to to know Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? to understand what Star Wars is about. And these actors know literally nothing from what I have heard and seen in interviews and from in the show. And it does not help that you've got writers that don't understand the shit they're writing neither. They put it into the show and it ends up ruin, ruining the canon. And this is just a couple little pieces from the show that are not canon. Like I said, I stopped watching the show entirely after like literally the fourth or fifth episode. I said, fuck it. And you know what? I'm glad I did. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm pissed about this. This is, this is stupid. This is dumb. And I'm glad that I'm not the only one that thinks it's dumb. And if you think I am, if you disagree with what I'm saying, I want you to go check multiple other Star Wars and just other reactors and go ahead and check them out. Tyrone Magnus, check out his reaction to it. Check out Star Wars Theory, check out his reaction to it. Check out many others that have said the exact same thing. This is dumb. Check the audience scores on the show. I hate to break it to you. L plus ratio equals you're wrong because the majority of people don't like it. And Star Wars should be about the minority, or the, sorry, the majority, not the minority. It should. That's how it works. That's how you make money. But anyways, guys, uh, that's my thoughts on the Acolyte in total. And yes, I, I it's all about Darth Plagueis because that's the only thing that I've taken away from this show to be that dramatically changing to the actual story. Not only has Disney Star Wars said, screw the future of Star Wars with the sequels, but now they've said, screw the past of Star Wars as well. So they've quite literally screwed over the future and they've screwed over the past. And it's only a matter of time before they screw up the stuff in between. 
And on that day, Star Wars will be completely dead for me and I will just be completely broken off from it. Unless it's it's fan made from somebody that actually knows Star Wars and takes the time to love it like they should. Like the writers should. Like the directors should. Like Disney should. And it's sad that I have to even say this. But it's getting to the point where Star Wars is starting to die. And it even sucks because I'm literally getting ready to go on vacation for me and my um, soon-to-be wife's honeymoon. And we're going to Galaxy's Edge. And a lot of the stuff there is really cool. And I, I can't wait to go. Um, I'm very excited for that trip. Uh, and it sucks because it's Disney Star Wars. And, and part of me kind of feels sucky about it because I'm like, I'm literally going to a Disney Star Wars place. And yet I've hated majority of all the shit that they've put out. But I'm not really going for any of the newer stuff. I'm going for the older stuff. Um, that's that's why I'm going to Galaxy's Edge, because of the, the older stuff. And at the end of the day, honestly, Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars-wise, looks better than anything they've actually put out in shows or movies. So with that being said, if you all enjoyed my reaction, uh, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share. Uh, post your comments down below. Let me know what you all thought. Do you agree with me? If you don't, put it down in the comments and I will read your comment and laugh <laughs> because at the end of the day, I'll even, you know what, before I go, let me pull it up. The Acolyte. I'm not even going to look up like ratings or reviews or nothing. I'm just going to go straight to the reviews. I'm just going to go to the straight reviews right here on the main page. I didn't put the Acolyte nothing. It just says the Acolyte. Tap to reviews. 1.8 stars out of 5 out of 20,566 ratings. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like the fans giving you a big old... IMDB, 3.7 out of 10. Vulture, 3 out of 5. Which, 3 out of 5 is way too high. But it's still... Like, close to, if not middle ground. And then you've got Rotten Tomatoes giving it 80%. Jesus Christ. You can tell. You can tell when some of those more professional reviews come out that they're more catered or bought out towards certain people. Because there's no way that majority of the damn audience reviews are going to say 1.8 stars. You're going to have IMDB give it 3.7 out of 10, and then you're going to have Rotten Tomatoes giving it an 80%. Get out of here. Are you kidding me? And having one of the biggest Star Wars YouTube channels and in in, in, in media general telling you that it sucks? Get out of here. Get out of here. That's literally me just typing in the acolyte and looking at the reviews. This show sucks. This show sucks. Like I said, like, subscribe, and share. Post your comments down below. Let me know what you all thought. And as always, guys, I will catch you on the next video. Hopefully, it'll be a better one with better news. Peace.